Black White Soul, and welcome to my review of Raw that aired on the 6th of the 10th, 14. Show kicks off with a recap of Ambrose's shop from last week, especially with the amazing line of like, ah, oh, here's a Cena t shirt. Oh, yeah, if you're into that kind of thing. I get show you a Seamus one for a quarter, yeah. Anyway, I loved Ambrose last week. I even liked the gunge. A lot of people were like, oh, it's so kiddy. It's like, well, it was funny. Let it happen. Again, there's new people that are like, oh, the Attitude Era was serious. Like, Austin just sprayed beer on people. How is this? Okay. Anyway. I quite like this opening. We get Seth Rollins. He is so pissed off from this, looking like a jerk, as he put it in his words. And he's like goating them both, and then the Stooges, Noble and Mercury, come out. They're trying to stop him. He's like, no, no, no. And then, of course, Cena charges out. Seth legs it, gets into the crowd, <laughs> and then Ambrose is just like standing behind him, like staring at Cena. Like, he's all, what are we looking at? And then, like, Seth turns, and just Ambrose instantly punches him, runs. Cena grabs him, pulls him in the ring. Both of them are struggling. Then the cannon fodder, Jamie and Mercury get in the way, Seth runs. Then of course we've got Ambrose and Cena in the ring firing up, but then bow down to the king and for God's sake, Stephanie's boobies. Jesus, they look good today. Yeah. Um, yep, of course, they make our main event, which is going to be... Similar to the main event we've had for a while now, but now Seth Rollins is involved. So it's a handicap, three on two, Dean and Cena versus Kane, Orta, and Seth. Orta? Orton and Seth. Uh, now, can we get a sodding finish? We are on six main events in a row. That had DQ finishes, including Knight of Champions. Right, like, Knight of Champions? Yeah, Knight of Champions. DQ finish, Raw, DQ finish, SmackDown, DQ finish, Raw, DQ finish, SmackDown, DQ finish. This will be our sixth if it happens today. Six DQ finishes main eventing in a row. Let's not have this happen. Come on, let's have a proper finish this match. Though, thank, frankly, because it's a handicap match, not likely going to happen. Um, as Ziggler did last week, fantastic opening match, six-man tag, Usos and Ziggler versus Cesaro and the Rhodes brothers still don't actually have a tag team name, I think it's the Rhodes, but they're not really known as Rhodes, they're like Gold Dust and Stardust, the Dust, Dusty Star, I don't know. Regardless, yeah. Um, it was a good match, these are all, all six of these people are really, really good workers. There was an excessive amount of people getting thrown into stairs, but it's fine. And when Ziggler got tagged in, there was a huge pop. WWE, please pay attention to that. But you are treating Ziggler as a star, this. He was getting in good offense, good moves. A triple super kick to lead to the Uso splash for the win. Crowd are a bit hesitant on the Usos. I'm assuming because the Rhodes have really earned the titles and they've done so well. And, of course, lineage, wrestling history, yada, yada, yada. So, I think, and the Usos were getting a little bit stale. So, I'm quite happy that the Rhodes have the titles. I think the crowd sort of want Rhodes to win over them. But, I think the crowd definitely are hot for Ziggler. And I cannot wait for this single match between Cesaro and Ziggler. Like, this is going to be good. It's going to be goddamn good wrestling. Don't even really need a storyline for it. All they've done so far is just matches... And that's all, sometimes that's, all, that's enough. You just have matches and then just keep having phenomenal matches. Keep it up. Well done, men. Well done. And yes. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> who? Who booked that? Why? You, uh, you take Adam Rose, who's like, fine. It's a fine way to get someone on. But he is struggling at the moment. 
If it wasn't for the bunny being entertaining and Heath Slater and Titus O'Neil being really good together, he would be dead. So having him out there alone, putting on his catchphrase, which is not over at the moment, with two women that people don't give a shit about, it's not going to help. It's just what I did. And then why the hell did he, she break a bottle over her ass? What the fuck? What, I, I don't even know what Kathy threw at her ass. They threw, like, glitter. I, I'm just... Bah. Whoever booked this, I hope you do better in your future endeavours. Either that or just fuck off. Three in a row! The streak is back! Bo, leave! Um, after this match, Bo Dallas has three straight wins over Mark Henry. Um, Mark Henry getting angry on the outside, dismantling the table. Goes to the World Strongest Slam, lifts. Bo slides over, gets in the ring, and that's the ten count. Mark Henry's countdown. Bo wins! Um, made a remark. The beatdown he got after last week's Raw, I thought Bo Dallas was going to be out for a little while. It was like briefcases, well, those big crate thingies were sliding into him and whatnot. But no, he's good. He can heal with the power of Bo leaving. If we all just Bo leave, he will become invincible. He'll become Bo Cena. And he'll rule the WWE. That's what we can hope for. Um, I love Bo Dallas. It's probably more nostalgia from NXT. Uh, but he runs with what he's got. He's got a creepy gimmick, a creepy smile. I do miss the victory laps, but it's a bit... It's sensible not to be doing that when you've got an angry big black man chasing you. That's my advice. If a big angry black man is chasing you, do not do a victory lap. Tip of the day. Something wasn't sitting right with Ambrose, so he comes out to the ring. Um, he brings up the fact on SmackDown he got abandoned by Cena. They're in a tag team match. Seth appeared at the ramp. Cena ran after him when he was going for the tag. And then he got beaten down. Um, Cena obliges him. I just love how Ambrose talks and his manner. It's just, it's just, it's just a wonderful creation, is Ambrose. Cena comes in, confronts him, and is just like telling him, is like, he's, he's, Talking Ambrose up. He's getting the crowd to cheer him, and they want to cheer him, so this is going very well. And they want to boo Cena, so <laughs> it helps the fact that Ambrose is not very buddy-buddy with Cena. He's very standoffish, which is always the, 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 the dynamic, 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 dynamic. Austin and The Rock never were friends. They sort of respected each other. Well, this is kind of the bit before they respect each other. They're just angry at each other. Um, Cena understands his point of view, and Ambrose is like, you know what, yeah, I would have probably done the same, because I don't give a crap about you. Oh, that got a big pop from the crowd. And uh, just a little back and forth. Cena's like, well, you've got to get on the same page, because the last time you did try and take them on yourself, they did put your head through cinder blocks, and Ambrose is like, hmm... But I don't mind dropping your ass. They're very both like, well, I can drop your ass. I'll drop your ass. And there's like tension there. It actually makes me really want to see this match. I want to see Ambrose versus Cena. I think that should be quite an interesting one. Again, if they stick with this sort of face face, like face pseudo face in Ambrose. He's a face, but he's not exactly going to hug puppies. If anything, he's going to eat them. Just raw. Just... Anyway. Uh, Ambrose, after a bit of deliberation and thinking, is like, Screw it! I can't think! I'm hungry! I'm going to Coney Island! And says, good luck later on, Cena. Throws the microphone behind him and just storms off. So, at the moment, it might be John Cena versus all three of the authority by himself. So, <laughs> let's see what we get later on with Dean Ambrose going to amusement park. Ah! <laughs> Dean Ambrose got on a train! Uh, <laughs> They show a video of him walking down into the underground, just just wandering around with the people, just like looking completely oblivious. I hope he had his wallet on him in the ring, because um, he's just gone straight out. He hasn't got his bag with him or anything, and he just got on a train. But he's just standing there next to this 
black guy who's just like trying really hard not to look at him. And he's just there. And then off he goes. Off he goes on the train. Uh, amazing. I love it. Uh, we get John Cena in the back and then Triple H is like, The champ is here! It's like, ah, this is fun. Uh, Triple H has just been a bit of a douche. And he's feeling bad. The idea being that Cena's going to go, well, a free on one isn't fair. Let's make it reduce those numbers. But uh, of course, Cena's not like that. He's like, I'll take on all three to get to Seth. And then Triple H is like, I'm, I'm going to do you a solid and make Seth start the match. So literally, what I'm going to assume is going to happen, Seth's going to start the match, tag out straight away. Of course. That's the logical choice. Um, let's see what they come up with, but yeah, this is a bit of a minor exchange. I don't know, Triple H just seems to be going out of his way. I'm gonna be a douche to the biggest star in my company. That's that's what's best for business right now. Uh, I think this is a bit unnecessary, really. Now we get... Uh, I hate her music, it's awful. But we have Brie Bella in a... Uh, one-armed match. She's got the weird strap on behind her. <laughs> Giggity. Um, and she is fighting Summer Rae, who, who plays the bitch perfectly. And yeah, it's, it's a one um, arm tie behind your back match. What do you expect from it? Uh, Brie manages to get the victory with knee to the face and a roll up. Uh, not much else to say about the match itself, apart from what the hell Layla was wearing. Or what she was not wearing. She literally just had her boobs covered, there was a lot of flesh on show, and jeans that obviously were too... You could see her bum crack. She might look like she's AJ's mum, but she's a hot AJ's mum. Layla, and I, I believe it was genu genuinely down to her ass crack that got the crowd on side, and what I could make out from the chance was thank you divas. That's what I kind of made out from it. And I think it was Layla's ass that stole the show and made it a positive reaction. So let's have Ayla... Ayla... Uh, my tongue is not working well today. I think my tongue's gone off in the train with Ambrose. Is that weird? Is that a weird mental image? Should I be talking about my tongue and Ambrose? <laughs> Especially if Goo's going to come at... Oh, just, no, no, just... Don't. Right. Yes, uh, Brie Bella wins, Layla's ass is amazing, and yes, yes, the yes chance is still going, the crowd are going along with it, in Chicago they were big last week, so it just helps to keep Daniel Bryan's presence known, but not actually have him involved in Brie Bella's angles, but it's nice to just have that little nod to him. Yeah, good segment. <laughs> Kane has a basket of fruit in his office, because... Sure, Kane's well into that. Uh, <laughs> and of course, it's from The Miz. It's from a fellow movie star, because Kane's movie's out soon. <laughs> and Sandow, I love you so, so much. I, the beard is tribute to you. Oh my god. He's, he's now taken to actually s mimicking Miz speaking. So The Miz is speaking, and Sandow is just lip-syncing along. Just, as the Miz is just saying how that's how they do it in Hollywood. They give fruit baskets. Kane is... It's really weird. Over the past, like, this has been going for months. Kane has had this thing with the Miz in the back. Where he's always just putting him in, like, matches. And Kane is almost being a face authority figure. But purely to the Miz. Kane purely just hates The Miz and puts him in favourable matches for the face. Really odd dynamic here, but I just love the segment. Sandow is running with this gimmick. He is turning this shit into shit aid. And yeah, as they leave and storm off, because they've now got a... Well, I think only The Miz has a match with Sheamus tonight. Um, Sandow comes back, takes the fruit basket and of course, hum, and storms on out. It's stupid, but I love I love Sand. Oh, if you don't love Sandow, you're a dick. I'm so happy to be seeing Tyson Kidd on TV. He has been doing phenomenally well in NXT, and it looks like they're letting him bring up his douchebaggy character. 
Um, he's against Jack Swagger, who's... They don't let Zeb talk anymore. And all it is now is we the people. Let's find the, the chance still over. But it's not going to last long at this rate if you don't actually have a reason to give a damn. And what a waste of Zep Coulter if you're not letting him talk. He's a good talker. Regardless, this is not a bad match. It's a good sort of re-debut of Tyson Kidd. Because it's been a while since he's been on Raw properly. Had him on last week just ignoring Rosa Mendes. Which was the best possible match to have him ignoring. Because that made total sense. Because it was shit. And here... Tyson Kidd gets the advantage by hiding behind Natty, getting on the apron, and just kicking Jack in the face. Get a few of his good shots. He does his lovely drop kick, rolls over the top rope, and then hits another kick. But, oh my god, I thought he was going to get murdered. Jack Swagger goes for what would usually be his belly to belly, but he kind of grabs him around the crotch instead and just throws him face first off the top rope, but lands in... The Patriot Lock, cool way to do it. And Tyson has to tap out. He was, looked like he was expecting Natty to like grab his hand or push the rope nearer, that kind of thing, but Natty wasn't doing it. So it looks like they're just playing up this Total Divas dissension. Though actually they did not mention it during this match. They did not really mention Total Divas. It wasn't like, oh, on Total Divas, this is happening. He bought a running machine. Burr, 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 burr. They actually just had it on its own thing, so I'm hoping this is just going to be the gimmick of Tyson being a douche. Which is, I'm happy with that, I love Tyson's douche. Again, there's these words I should be saying that I like. Random little thing of Edge and Christian, they're promoting a Smackdown anniversary thing, and it sounds like they're going to be hosting it and doing the main parts for it. Can't wait. I want the network! Give me the goddamn network! And hello Andrew, my flatmate, it's good to see you! Well, this Roman Reigns announcements talk they had. Well, basically, Michael Cole says, here he is. And then he stumbles his way to saying, I miss you. Um, I'm going to be back. Um, yeah, with the right attitude and focus and attitude and attitude and attitude. Um, I'll be uh, back, you know. How's that uh, novel coming? Yeah, you know, going to write a novel. I'm going to no, 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 you give a fan. Um, yeah, not the most amazing uh, talker is our Roman Reigns. Maybe they should have actually scripted him a bit better or had like a heel interrupt him yeah. so he could say he's gonna kick his ass. We'll see. Okay, I enjoyed this. I thought it was stupid, but it had some logic to it in animal biological sense. Uh, crowd not so hot on this, but you've got Slater Gator with their ridiculous theme music and really bad photoshopped heads. Um, and they're with Hornswoggle, their Gator. But this match is actually Mini Gator versus El Torito, the Hornswoggle Torito rivalry, which actually the WLC was amazing earlier in the year. So good. Yeah, this he's. And Hornswoggle is getting into character. He's acting like a Gator, charging after him. But then they throw their jackets to Torito. He jumps on the back of the gator and puts the bag over the head, which is what you do. If they can't see, it calms them down. They relax. Keeps them subdued. So Heath Slater gets in the ring, pulls it off, and then he strikes. And Heath Slater gets gator rolled all around. Of course, Hornswoggle didn't notice it was him. And then they're getting arguments in the ring. Titus gets on the apron, laughs. Uh, we got This Is Stupid Chant, which I'll grant you, it was stupid, but I kind of enjoyed it. Um, and then... El Torito knocks Titus off the apron, and then we get Thank You Jesus. Um... Is he... are they thanking Jesus for the creation of the animals? Are they thanking Jesus for Heath Slater? I am not the foggiest. I do not know what Jesus brought to the situation. All I know is one time, God, Shawn Michaels' tag team partner, walked out on him. So if they bring Jesus in as a character, maybe he could tag with God and we'll see if God finally does do that tag team match. And this is stupid and that happened before. What the? 
Fuck the... This might get flagged now, but what? No! What the? Out of all the times for him not to bring it by satellite! Cena. Um. Uh, I thought Austin was meant to be making the return. Uh, the, the, the Rock. The Rock is coming to the ring. To see Rusev. Come back in time. That's it. We we've actually time traveled. The rocket. Uh, what? What? No! I do not think Rosev was expecting this. I don't think many people were expecting this. There's a list of 50 people I was expecting more than The Rock. One of them being Vladimir Putin. What? Not the time, Marl. <laughs> I want to stand up. <laughs> Your claws are so sharp. I'll I'll be back in a minute. Back in a minute. <laughs> <sighs> I basically feel like I orgasmed. Um, if I, 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 I feel like I need a cigarette. That's just ah. Uh. <sighs> it was the rock, <laughs> the rock, the Brahma ball, the 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 piting jabroni, uh, just the bro the rock. They, before we went to commercial break, they showed the Big Show and some dude having a chat. Led me to believe Big Show was coming to go out. No! No Big Show! We got The Rock. Andrew in the kitchen, who did we get? The guy from the Tooth Fairy. The guy from the Tooth Fairy. AKA The Rock. The Rock. AKA Cliff Jumper in Transformers Prime who died in the first episode. AKA. Dwayne, aka played his own father in that 70s show, aka 47 is a gun they use in America. Yeah, Rusev got to have a segment with The Rock, and I very much believe The Rock is now having sex with Lana in the back. He was looking at her like, that's something I'm going to devour. With passion, hunger, and penis. Just, oh my god, just... Oh, just, just... Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed, WWE. You managed to keep this a surprise. I don't know if this was just a last minute thing. The Rock suggested it. You begged him. What? But I'm just very impressed that this was kept as a surprise. It has so, 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 so much more impact 
not having the slightest clue the rock was coming out. I'm not someone that does dirt sheets or anything like that. I, I do listen to the Law podcast and they do a little bit backside, what's gonna, backside, backstage, what's gonna be coming out, but nothing like this. I didn't even hear an inkling from the dirt sheets of this. This. Oh, it was so good to see him. It was a nice nostalgic trip and made so much better by the sheer fact it was a surprise. They didn't, like, build it up to be this monumental, oh my god, The Rock's gonna come back, and it's like, no, it's just gonna talk for five seconds. But this was perfect. This was... Oh, and... Uh, 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 ah! oh, there are so many women in the ring. I... I... Naughty thoughts. <laughs> Paige comes out with her new bestie of Alicia Fox. Um, Alicia Fox not a bad wrestler, not amazing, but not bad. And she had the weird gimmick though, it sort of died. And they were, looked like they were going to do it, like she got the soda ready last week, but they didn't use it. Um, this is all going around like on the intimate tweets. AJ was like, well, I'll give my friend, oh wait, I don't have any friends. And then Paige sent back a really like, a really sort of like, Passive aggressive. Well, you did have friends, but you ruined it. As in, like, she's feeling really hurt from AJ's betrayal, um, which I really like. I like this weird storyline going on between them. But for tonight, AJ has found someone who's too dim-witted and good-natured to not be friendly, and that is Emma. I'm so happy to see her back on Raw. She's a really good talent. The dance did not get over because you didn't do anything with it. You're failing WWE, not Emma's. She's a good in-ring person, has a good move set. You said more. But yeah, and we actually get a fairly good amount of Emma here. She's in a match against Alicia Fox. Emma just completely is winning. But like, AJ is getting frustrated at the dancing and the not the pinning. And she's like, cover her, cover her. And then AJ's like, I can't be nice anymore. Takes her title, walks away, and Emma's just like, Hey! Just wanna... Just co come back. Go on, come back down. Come... Go over here! I'm gonna... Come over here! And turn round, kicked to the face by our Divas Champion Paige, and the Rampage, which was goddamn spiked onto Emma's head. Divas Champion still looking strong, and this weird, twisted love affair between AJ and Paige is carrying on, and that's all the material I need to get me through a night. I have no idea what... Okay, I, I've i heard and thought and knew and things that they're like... Luke was a good worker, and he could probably make it on his own. Um... But now this has all been for, I'm not, I'm really not sure if this is a singles push for either of these guys, because now they just did a promo video of Eric, and it just had, it, it was brutally evil. They had him like being a child and like playing with a little trailer and a horse, a fake little pony thing, feeding it apples and, jeez, it's terrifying. This is genuinely terrifying editing. Well done, WWE. And then after he sort of then announced that he set Eric free as well, then there's this weird thing of it's coming written on a pregnant woman's stomach. Has Bray Wyatt spawned with something? Are we getting children? Is the summoning the devil? I don't know, but I want to know. This is the most exciting thing that's happened to the Wyatts in ages. I thought the Jericho food... Food? Jericho's food. I, I didn't think anything about Jericho's food. But I thought the Jericho feud... But I thought the Jericho feud... If I can get there and the objects around me stop falling over... Was really disappointing. I thought it was going to be a really good psychological thing, but it just fell flat. But yeah, this is like reigniting my interest in the wire, so I have no idea what's going on, but I like it. Hey, well done Bruno San Martino, 79. Good lad. Well done. Good, good, good lad you are, Bruno. Good lad. Miz vs. Sheamus that was made by uh, Kane earlier in the show. <laughs> 
it's a fairly standard match. I, I think this will be a fairly good feud over the coming weeks. But Sandow stole the match. As the Miz and Sheamus are wrestling, Sandow is on the outside and he is copying and mimicking the moves. And the crowd is so into Sandow. There's just like Sandow's better chance. Um, just Sandow chance in general. Uh, just, and every time he cheats and helps the Miz, they're just like, yeah! And every time Sheamus stops him, boo! Like, Seamus turns to the crowd and is FELLA! And it's just met with BOO! Oh, this is a fun crowd tonight and as I've said it, Sandow, you're amazing, amazing, amazing. Whatever you say about Cena, he does generally care in these sort of areas. He is the WWE spokesman, he is their top guy, and this is why he's connects to the people. We had the Susan J. Coleman, like, woman who's going through it at the moment and helping the Foundation Cancer Trust thing. Yeah, come out, do a little speech, and then Cena sort of walks her off, and this is, this is one of the areas she, Cena shines, like, it's no secret, like, Cena is the highest, like, providing of make-a-wish in the company, and this is sort of the good stuff he does. This, if... <laughs> if I was to be a wrestler, these were the type of things that I'd love to get involved with. This is one of the things I was aiming for when I wanted to do it, and it's just such a nice thing when you see people really sort of giving back when they've earned it. As much as people hate him and boo him, Cena is a good guy. He does do a lot for the locker room. Like, he actually pays out of his own money for, like, masseuses and stuff for the guys in the back. He, like, give them a bit of extra attention after matches, so... Give him some respect, at least in that area. At least. Main event is the exact same main event, basically, we've had for the last two weeks. Not that exciting. But it's just Cena, and then it's a beat down, the match gets finished with the sixth DQ in a row! Smackdown had better just have a finish to its main event. And yeah, the match boring. And then we get a redeeming feature. As Cena is getting his beat down, Dean Ambrose appears with a hot dog trolley and he gets himself a hot dog pops up his little umbrella brings it down to ringside Randy Orton and Kane go to take him off and Dean pushes his jacket aside and there he's got a holster one with mustard, one with ketchup BAM! into their faces Dean Ambrose then runs the hot dog trolley into them and then legs it into the ring to get a piece of Seth the, everyone but Mario makes into a big brawl of ketchup and mustard. Bodies flying everywhere. Cena's managed to recover and he hits in some AAs. S Dean Ambrose sees his chance to dive at Seth and attacks him. Throws fried onions on him. Throws some more mustard and ketchup and Seth slips his way up. And then Ambrose and Cena have a cleared ring and they're in there. Then the games music hits. And we finally get our decision of where this is all going. On the pay-per-view, we will have Dean Ambrose versus John Cena. Winner on that show, I believe. Well, of course on that show. On that show, we'll get Seth Rollins in hell in a cell. Dude, Ambrose has to win. John Cena could not win this. This would be ridiculous. If John Cena wins, there is going to be such a bad reaction for him. And it is going to be just the reverse. You're going to get Seth getting cheered, Cena getting booed, and it's going to be awful. If Ambro wins, you're going to have the most over guy versus the most hated guy. And collision! God damn it, WWE! Do it! Do it! Do it! Ambrose versus Seth Cena. Ambrose needs to defeat John Cena. 
saying those words, I don't believe it can happen, but it must. Please do it. Please. This has got me interested, so it looks like... Oh yeah, after this announcement, Dean Ambrose just instantly turns around Cena and lays him out. Um, it's the smart thing to do, and huge reaction from the crowd. The crowd reacted the way you want it to. Let Ambrose win. But yes, this is our direction. I'm actually quite excited for this match. I really want to see Ambrose and Cena and see them in a ring together, see how they do. And then, really, 100%, 1,000 want to see the Seth and Ambrose pay off. We've been working towards this for months and months. I want to see this in the hell in the cell. Give it to us, WWE. Give it to us, give it to us now! Tell me what you think of Raw. Did you have any idea The Rock was going to be there? You lucky crowd, you bunch of bastards. And until next time, like, subscribe, and TT. Andrew, who was the guy that appeared earlier? Um, Rock. Yes. That's, um... Did you say the Rock Lesnar? Oh, no, I said Rock. Um, I was thinking about saying the guy from the Two Fair, but... Um... My mind had a brain fart, so I just said rock. Ah. No, that's something got my throat. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh, what the? <laughs> Isn't that like the sound at the end of Buffy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, subscribe for this really educational show. <laughs> it's really prof professionally done. Maybe YouTube, you should be putting my advert on TV, okay? TTFN, scope.